start. Okay, so <coughs> today we want to do a uh, recommender systems, uh, which are uh, extremely important for e-commerce, right? Um, whenever I go to Amazon to buy a book that I need, I always get uh, at least a couple of books because um, of this very smart Amazon uh, recommender system. Whenever I click on a book that I need, it also gives you underneath, uh, uh, you may also like uh, options, right, with other books. And uh, it's really pretty, uh, it's pretty effective, right? I always end up buying several books and my wife screaming with me, right? So, uh, screaming at me. So, um, what do you think, how does Amazon do that? Uh, They have a lot of stuff recommending you. Sorry? They have a lot of stuff that personally recommends you stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff that personally recommends, so you uh, they employ little uh, uh, elves there, right? And uh, well, actually, the machine does it uh, uh, by itself, the system does it by itself, and uh, um, there are in general two ways. Uh, to do uh, recommendations, right? For example, um, let's take as an example this uh, Netflix uh, challenge. So, uh, I don't know exactly when it was, maybe 10, 15 years back, Netflix introduced this challenge to give uh, one million dollars to whoever uh, pr uh, makes better recommender system than the best recommender system. Uh, and as a kind of gold standard, they put uh, their own recommender system. Uh, and uh, it was eventually uh, beat by uh, several uh, such uh, systems and uh, um, so, what? Uh, how can we think about uh, recommender systems? Uh, you can think of this of information that you have in a form of an incomplete table, right? Uh, and. Uh, uh, so somewhere in the table, you have data uh, about uh, what a particular customer liked. And that can be a score, a rating score between, say, y, one and uh, five uh, stars. Uh, so on the left, on the left-hand side coordinate are users. And here are movies. And we have quite a sparse matrix, right? With uh, uh, recommendation data. And somehow, given this information, who like which movie. We want to uh, guess among the movies that particular user hasn't seen which ones he would like the best. Right. So, obvious, so the underlying assumption that makes uh, uh, recommender systems uh, work is that the uh, these uh, entries are not kind of random, but they reflect two things. One is uh, the popularity of the movies. So good movies should have consistently higher ranks than 
bad movies, right? So in this data, there is an implicit information about the quality or popularity of a movie. But there is also um, data about tastes of particular users, right? And the underlying idea is that this sparse data somehow reflects both of these qualities, uh, namely the popularity of movies, uh, and uh, uh, it also reflects uh, tastes of each user. So uh, there are two types um, of recommender system. First would be uh, by content. Um, what, what would this be? For example, on Amazon, if I look at a book, uh, say, design of algorithms, then the system tries to categorize what kind of book that is and recommend books that are of similar content. So if I look for design of algorithms, uh, then probably this book is about the same topic as, uh, uh, for example, uh, introduction to algorithms. So in case of movies, what would that be? Well, for example, if I like the movie that is a, uh, that can be categorized, for example, as a romantic comedy, then and if I liked it, then under, we can make assumption that I would also like other movies that are uh, romantic comedies. Or, for example, uh, if I like romantic comedies, uh, then maybe I am not as likely to like uh, science fiction movies, uh, even if they are really good, uh, because I like different genres. So I think you understand uh, uh, what this first um, uh, first way of doing recommendations are. And the second that is actually more powerful is uh, by uh, collaborative filtering. Okay. What is collaborative filtering? Instead of Amazon trying to categorize books by uh, semantics, namely by their content, <coughs> what's in the books, right? Given the vast number of customers, uh, it, is, it can also simply keep track of uh, what people who bought that book uh, which other books they bought, right? So then uh, <coughs> we do not make any assumptions about the content of the book. We simply see what people who bought that book or who saw that movie and liked it, which other movies uh, uh, they uh, saw um, and also liked. So the second method tends to work much better than the first method. What do you think? Why, why would be the second method more effective than one by content? More representative of people. Sorry? More representative of people's taste. Uh, it's actually the main problem with number one is who would categorize the books? So there you really need the semantic judgment to look through the you know to look through the book and see ah this book is about algorithms so you need human competence to accurately uh, categorize books or movies and of course when you categorize books or movies how many categories do you form right uh, so, in all likelihood, the number of categories would have to grow 
and you would have to change your recommender system accordingly. So uh, collaborative filtering is uh, 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 superior in performance compared to uh, recommendation by content. And in fact, it's so superior that uh, even for um, uh, tasks uh, that we traditionally would think uh, would be um, better suited by the first method, actually the second method works better. For example, when you type a query into Google and you make a typo, right? Google says, did you mean such and such? And it is not done by looking in the dictionary what would be the closest word in terms of edit distance, right? Um, that uh, is a legitimate word uh, in the dictionary. Well, one would assume that this is what they are doing, but actually they are not doing that. Uh, they simply keep track after an, a, a, a query that contains an illegal word, what was the next query? Because presumably the user realized that he made a spelling mistake, uh, 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 then went back and searched again with the correct uh, uh, wording. So in fact, uh, rather than edit distance, uh, uh, so Google, in, in fact, it's a recommender system. You have a query and Google recommends you an alternative uh, uh, query, right? Uh, and it is done by collaborative filtering simply because Google keeps uh, uh, all the queries, they never get deleted, so there is a vast amount of data that Google leverages. And in fact, uh, part of the success of Google was due not only just uh, to the page rank, but just by carefully managing a vast information uh, that is uh, uh, present in uh, uh, in uh, queries themselves, right? So these are the two uh, methods. Uh, the first one is kind of intuitively clear, but it's hard to implement. It requires usually uh, human uh, intervention, and that's uh, uh, quite uh, quite expensive. So we will concentrate on collaborative filtering, which is uh, more important and uh, more uh, prevalent. Uh, so somehow, given this incomplete information, we want to deduce things like uh, what is the user's taste, right? And uh, what kind of movie a movie is and how good it is, uh, right? So how do we do um, that? Uh, um, you see, if I, say, saw a movie and gave it three stars, and say someone else also saw the same movie and also gave it three stars, what do you think? Can we conclude from this information that that person and myself equally liked uh, that movie? I give it three stars, you give it three stars. Gee, it looks like uh, we like it equally. Is that right? Why not? Exactly. So you see, if I, on average, tend to give uh, one or two stars to movies because <coughs> I am kind of very, <coughs> very discerning uh, uh, critic of movies, uh, then uh, giving three stars uh, would be actually extremely high mark. But if someone tends to like the movies in general, is more general, generous with the uh, uh, with the uh, re reviews, right? Then if he usually gives uh, three, four, or five marks and the movie got uh, three stars, well, this would mean 
that he actually didn't like very much that movie. So uh, before we can do anything serious, uh, we have to pre-process this data. So first step, uh, uh, pre-processing. Um, what is the goal? Uh, remove user uh, bias. Right? So uh, we want to kind of rescale the marks in such a way that my propensity to give uh, marks from one to three stars uh, somehow becomes uh, the same uh, results in the same data as uh, uh, someone who does usually give uh, three, four, five marks, three to five marks. So we uh, have to remove user bias. Now, <coughs> uh, there is also something that which, uh, which we can call a uh, movie bias. <coughs> you see, if you know, at any moment in time, certain movies can be very popular, right, on average. And some can be uh, popular only within a smaller community. Right. So, um, for example, uh, there are, poor, uh, there are uh, special genres like, say, dark comedies. Uh, Right, that uh, few people like, but those that like, like them uh, very much. So average score for that movie wouldn't be very high compared to a blockbuster, right? So, but when you recommend a movie, you don't want to recommend it just by over all popularity, because this might be irrelevant for a particular user. So the second goal, so A, remove user bias, and B is uh, remove uh, movie bias. OK. Uh, also, <coughs> uh, when we rank movies between 0 and 5 stars, and the average of all rankings is, uh, say, 2.5 stars, then to, to make the model as efficient as possible, we want to kind of remove this center, right, and kind of put everything to wobble around zero. You will see uh, why this is so. Uh, so see, we can remove uh, uh, overall average. Uh, and uh, so this is why I call it pre-processing. You kind of massage this data that whatever is left in the table is as reflective of user's taste as and as reflective of a uh, relative quality of a movie. <coughs> How do we do that? We do this via a uh, method that is uh, uh, quite, um, that is very widely used for huge number of uh, tasks. Namely, we do it by least squares. Uh, so, method. least squares. <coughs> so what we, so I, the idea is uh, we want to throw out as much from these numbers as possible that has simple, trivial kind of exp, uh, explanation. So, and to do that, we 
do the following. So uh, let uh, uh, rho i j uh, be the uh, ranking of the not ranking, but uh, um, let me the, uh, uh, how do we call it? Uh, uh, this is not ranks, ranks means in order, the, but the rate, rate, let me the rating uh, given by user I uh, to move it J, right? And only for each I, there will be only a few J's that uh, have uh, this ranking assigned, right? Because every user uh, has uh, ranked only a few uh, movies. And then you want to minimize the following sum. Sum over all raters, right, uh, of the sum over all movies i, such that r has rated i, right? So again, this means that uh, uh, rater r has rated that particular movie, so the entry in the table is not blank. And then here we have a row uh, R I minus. Now, we don't know user bias, and we don't know the movie bias, and in such circumstances, we simply take them as variables. Uh, so this will be uh, user uh, or rater uh, bias. Let's call it uh, uh, B. BR minus um, here will be bias of the movie. And then squared. So uh, this is what we want to minimize uh, over all values of B, R, and uh, uh, B, R. So here, B, R uh, is a variable uh, for each uh, user and bi is a variable uh, for each movie. So altogether, you have as many variables as some total of the number of users plus the number of movies, but because every user has marked several uh, movies, the number of rows will be much larger, several times larger than the number of variables. So, um, How do we solve uh, this optimization? Uh, well, we set this quantity uh, to be uh, objective uh, in terms of P R, all the P R's, uh, we put them together, and uh, all the P I's. Uh, together, right? Because these are fixed numbers that come from the table. And these guys are um, just the vectors of all variables. So this depends on variables BR and BI. 
and we want to find such a value for these variables so that this objective attains the smallest possible value. So this is what I would call trivial explanations, right? It's a systematic bias of a user, and this is the systematic bias of a movie. So you see, if a user systematically gives uh, rank rankings from three to five, uh, this bias, uh, and say the average uh, ranking is uh, three, right? Then this bias uh, will be some quantity, uh, maybe around three, right? And if a movie is very popular, then uh, it will have high bias, high positive bias, and uh, um, this value will be large, right? Um, so how do we solve uh, this? Uh, uh, this is a general list where uh, uh, problem. We solve this problem. Can you move the camera here? Uh, we solve this problem usually, even though this is not how software packages uh, do it because it's not very numerically stable. Uh, but uh, one way of doing it is to find partial derivatives of uh, objective of PR um, and uh, BI. You find the partial derivative with respect to each particular PR. Uh, say k and set it to zero and also the objective of b r b i with respect to uh, every uh, b i uh, m and set it equal to zero and uh, one nice thing Right, because this will guarantee the existence, well, not guarantee, but this can find all potential local extrema of the function, right? So uh, notice this is a quadratic function in terms of the variables. If I differentiate it, two goes outside and this becomes linear. So uh, what I get uh, will be the system of as many linear equations as I have variables, right? And I can solve them, uh, solve these systems of linear equations uh, to uh, find the minimum. Um, unfortunately, this is not how you do it in practice because this system tends to be very ill-conditioned, which means that small perturbation in, of the rows can cause huge perturbation of the, these optimal values. So instead of uh, this, uh, uh, this is sometimes solved by steepest descent, right? We um, start with arbitrary uh, values for BR and BI, say mean of uh, uh, the all users, oh, sorry, all the movies over the entire uh, table, and then we do gradient descent in the direction uh, where uh, the function changes the steepest, right, namely in the direction of the gradient. Uh, so, <clears throat> but you don't have to worry about this much because um, very sophisticated ways of solving the least squares are implemented in all numerical packages. For example, MATLAB or Mathematica all have uh, fancy uh, methods uh, usually based on something called interior point uh, method that uh, efficiently and numerically robustly finds the values 
of these guys, of these variables that minimizes this sum. Why do we want to minimize this sum? We simply kind of want to take out as much as possible uh, that we kind of um, what can be explained by simple uh, uh, reasons, for example, bias of the user and bias of uh, the movie. So are you with me? Do you understand how this works, uh, this um, initial uh, pre-processing? So simply, we subtract uh, anything that is systematic uh, bias of a user or bias of the movie because it doesn't hold explanatory value to us, right? We want to see not the bias of the user that's irrelevant, we want to see his taste. How does he like one movie relative to another movie? Okay, uh, so one problem with least squares uh, that in fact causes them to be numerically unstable is overfitting. Uh, what is uh, the... Uh, so let me uh, talk about this a little bit uh, just to explain to you uh, what this might be. Assume that you have uh, some data, you, you took some measurements, uh, right, of some uh, physical quantity over time, uh, right? And you suspect that there is a simple explanation for the quantity. You suspect that the law that governs uh, this data uh, is actually a polynomial, uh, right? So uh, what you might want to do, uh, and so these are measurements uh, at instance t1, t2, uh, here is tn minus 1, and here is instant t, and the sample values are s1, s2, and so forth. This is sn minus 1, and this is sn. And uh, uh, you suspect that the proper model for this is uh, uh, that um, y of t can be uh, pretty well uh, explained by a low degree polynomial. <coughs> say uh, there is a polynomial that uh, is say a times uh, a times t to the fourth, say a four t to the fourth plus a three t cube plus a two t squared plus a one t plus a zero. But you have here, so you have four unknowns, uh, but you have many more, say you have a hundred data points. Uh, then the way we do, we solve the least squares. Uh, so we solve, we minimize, uh, so this objective uh, can be seen as y uh, of t and then the vector of these parameters i, a, uh, and we want to minimize sum uh, when, say, uh, i goes between 1 and n of uh, y of uh, t i minus the corresponding sample s i, right, squared. You want to minimize this. Right, so you simply want to minimize uh, um, a four times uh, t one to the fourth power plus a three t one to the third power plus so forth plus a zero minus the sample value as one squared plus and then the same a four t two to the fourth power plus uh, a3 uh, t2 cubic plus 
minus s uh, uh, 2 squared plus and so forth. The last one is a4 uh, tn to the fourth power plus a3 tn cube plus and so forth. And then minus sn squared. Right? So how do you solve this? You simply differentiate with respect to a4, set it equal to 0. Differentiate with respect to a3, set it equal to 0. Right? And finally, differentiate with respect to a0, and you set this equal to 0, and you solve this system of, uh, of, four, of how many? Five equations in five unknowns. But now the trick is uh, the, uh, the result that you get uh, might so to speak speak up the noise, right? Because if this can be well modeled by a four degree polynomial, the reason why it's not perfectly on a curve of a four degree, you can call it noise, right? So the result of this minimization can produce very large values uh, for a for a's, uh, but that are of opposite sign, and so somehow these things tend to cancel out, uh, and for that reason these differences become small. But you see, we say that uh, uh, we did overfitting because these particular values uh, obtained uh, by solving these systems. So if we solve uh, just for uh, dy of uh, uh, dA over uh, dA4 and set it equal to 0, dy d of A all the way to dA0 equal to 0. This might produce large, very large values for A. So say a4 is equal 10 to the uh, 16 um, of order 10 to the 10 to the 16 a3 can be uh, say of the order of minus 10 to the uh, 16 uh, then a2 can be again of very large uh,